Hello and welcome to another episode of Memory Card. Today I want to talk about the Xbox 360. So for me the Xbox 360 was it's a strange shape. It looks like someone's taking a PC hard drive and giving it a good squeeze. Um, it looked like um, an Apple Core. It's a strange design. They spent a lot of money on it but I suppose why not? Um, the version I had was the Elite because I wasn't messing around. I didn't want the arcade, I didn't want one with a tiny hard drive. I wanted one with a big hard drive. Um, and this was my second console in that generation. I had the Wii for a long time. And this was the one I went for. Um, just, I think, purely down to the fact that I had a lot more games that appealed to me at the time. I didn't see as many. PlayStation 3 games that appealed to me. Um, I'm guessing that be because the, the capacity of their disc was better that they were waiting to release the games with more content, I don't know. But um, if you're impatient and you want to play those games now, 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 the Xbox was perfect for that. Um, this was the first time I played Assassin's Creed. Uh, this this console generation. Um, I didn't enjoy the first one, but the latter ones, I did. They were really good fun to play. That was the first time I also ever discovered Star Ocean. Um, I might do a video about that at some point, um, or multiple videos. Um, I never heard of that franchise before, and as it was a franchise, I thought this was its first outing. Um, so that this console introduced me to that franchise um, and it was just, I think, design-wise it was a bit iffy but the controller I think was fantastic. The left control stick and the right control stick were kind of like that which I think is a perfect idea. The D-pad is not the main focus anymore you play a lot of games that are 3D and 3D movement is done a lot better with a control stick. You've got more range of movement. And so relegating the D-pad down to the, the bottom of the controller, I think for me made a lot of sense. The D-pad was a bit rubbish, but it didn't matter. It's relegated to most of the camera control at this point. Um, or emotes or swapping weapons on first person shooters so it's not it was responsive enough that it worked for that or power to them I think this was a great design uh, for a controller um, not quite as good as the GameCube controller for feel but I think it was one that got it spot on um, and I think that that's kind of probably why a lot of their controllers have a similar shape that curved shape that fits in your hand perfectly and you can rest your fingers under the shoulder buttons, you can rest your fingers on the shoulder buttons. Um, it was pretty great and they were, they were actual triggers as well. The buttons, the buttons, um, I remember on the original PlayStation, the R1, R2, um, L2 and L1, they were I think kind of roughly the same shape. And size, whereas this, they actually had them as triggers. They were designed as triggers, they were meant to be used as triggers, and for gaming, first person shooters, perfect quick tri twitch uh, triggers. Um, also, I think for fighting games as well, some fighting games I think used them. Um, it was a great controller, there was a lot of games, um, they didn't feel like that much shovelware either. It was for me a great console, um, I had a lot of games with it, I had a lot of fun with it. It ruined Perfect Dark but I've talked about that in the past. Um, I focus mostly on my memories of this console. Um, by and large good. The Xbox Live Gold, bit on the expensive side. Um, I bought it twice in my two three years I owned the console before selling it. Um, for me a bit of a waste. 
they made it fantastic when they made, I think they made, if you'd had gold, and you didn't renew your gold, you bumped to silver, which I think was a great move on their part. Um, silver, you couldn't play online, but you could still buy the games. And that was perfect tier for me. I wish they hadn't charged for silver to begin with. Um, I think it became free at one point, or maybe it was free after you had gold. I don't remember what they did with it, but um, I think ideally that would have been a better tier for me. Um, it was only slightly more expensive to go gold, that's why I did it. Um, but really, I didn't really make much use of it. I didn't really put an awful lot online. I, I was the only one I knew that actually had an Xbox 360, and none of my friends did. Um, they were all Nintendo or Sony. And it was, I think, the best Xbox console. I've never played a one, um, which is strange to go, I suppose, one, 360 one, or no, uh, just the original Xbox. So I suppose it means they've done a full, you could say they've done a full circle, but for me, the best of the, the three that they've done, um, a good fun console, you could put it on its side, You could put it on its side, you could put it standing up. Mine was standing up on its end. Um, uh, definitely, I think that if you don't own one, it's not the best thing to go out and buy at this moment in time. Um, because I think a lot of the games are starting to get ported and I think there's... Um, I don't know much about their store because um, they've gone back to Sony, but I think that this was, of the consoles I've played of theirs, I think this was the one that stands out for me. It's the only one I've played, but I think um, th they got it right with this one. There's no massive intrusive features. They didn't dig themselves a massive hole with it. I think it's one of these consoles that um, did a lot right. It did some things wrong, um, but by and large, I think it was a great console for the time. Um, oh, I think that some of the games did come out um, later on on PS3. Um, and of course, PS3 had Final Fantasies um, on the PS3 store, but I got to play Final Fantasy XIII, so that made up for it um, in the end. And it introduced me, like I said, to Star Ocean and to Assassin's Creed. I still play Assassin's Creed. I really want to see a new Star Ocean game. Um, that franchise is flagging a bit. Um, that's for another video. Uh, I just think that this was, by and large, a good fun console to own. Um, I've since sold it, like I said, um, because I stopped playing it, the PS4 took over, but for the, the, the lifespan for me of it, um, it was only a couple of years, but I had a lot of fun with it. Um, definitely, I think it was one of these ones that was a good purchase, although mine did red ring. Um, I think that by and large, with the selection of games I had for it, um, a good purchase, a solid purchase, um, it was the first console I bought with my own, I can I remember I can, off the top of my head that I bought with my own money. Um, I didn't have to beg my parents for it. And I just think it was a good, fun memory. Uh, the good thing about the Elite as well is you could do HDMI gaming, so it was high def. You didn't have to use blooming SCART and component and AV cables and all that jazz although it came with a lot of those. Um, so yeah, HD gaming, a brilliant controller, a load, a load of games that were fantastic, except for Perfect Dark Zero. That was a stinker. Um, but a good console by and large. Definitely, if you haven't played it, you should, if your friends have got one, go to the house and play it. Um, you can probably pick it up for peanuts now if you don't want to buy a one. If you don't have the um, 
vast pockets for buying a wine. Uh, the games are, I think, a lot of them are fairly cheap now anyway, apart from, I guess, the rare ones. Um, so yeah, go and check it out if you haven't checked it out. Um, definitely worth the money. Now, even more so now. Um, yeah. It, that gets the two thumbs up from me. Uh, so if you like this video, if you agree with me if you, on any of the points, if you agree with me about the controller, the games, then let me know in the comments. Um, please hit subscribe. It'd be much appreciated. So until the next time, cheerio.